Hello everybody, this is Lara from PureElliottWave.com with an update for Ethereum for you today, 25th of April 2023. Just a reminder, if you want Bitcoin analysis every week in this same format, I provide that on my website, Pure Elliott Wave, and you can get that on a subscription basis. I provide text, charts, and video for my membership every week after the end of week, so I provide it on Monday after the weekly candlestick is finalized. For Ethereum, last analysis was in March and I expected upward movement to continue. It has and it invalidated the alternate Elliott wave count, giving us a bit more confidence in the main. There's something a bit odd about the last upward wave though, which means that I expect an expanded flat is unfolding and I expect a pullback to continue now to about 1291.17. After that, my analysis for Ethereum is extremely bullish. My target for a primary degree third wave is 54226 if that's wrong it's not going to be high enough it would be too conservative on the monthly chart from its inception back here to this high here in 2017 this upward movement subdivides beautifully as a five wave impulse one double zigzag for two three triangle for four and five I've noted some wavelengths on this chart, they're not all Fibonacci ratios and I'm noting them to try and get an idea of how long Ethereum's waves normally are. Here primary wave 3 was 19.36 times the length of primary wave 1. That's extremely long for a third wave, quite normal for a cryptocurrency third wave though. And here primary wave 5 was 81.51 longer than 2.618 the length of primary 3. This chart is on a semi-log scale so in terms of price distance travelled and therefore potential profit, primary wave 5 is the longest portion of this impulse and it was over in just three months whereas primary wave three lasted a lot longer and didn't move as far. The strongest portion of this upward movement is the fifth wave to end cycle wave one. That's really typical for cryptocurrencies. It's the fifth waves which offer the greatest profit in the shortest space of time. That's important to understand what might happen in the future. So I have a cycle degree first wave over here a cycle degree second wave as a double zigzag over here is a 94% correction of cycle wave one. That's another feature typical of cryptocurrencies. Second waves are commonly, well, fourth waves as well. The bear markets for cryptos are really, really deep. A 94% correction is absolutely normal to be expected behavior. Again, it doesn't look like cycle two is that deep compared to cycle wave one because of the scale, the semi-log scale. It's the only way to realistically read these charts. You just can't view them on an arithmetic scale. The volatility is so extreme. When two is over, three should begin. Cycle wave three can't be labeled over here because this can't be cycle four because cycle four may not move into cycle wave one price territory. And also I would expect cycle wave three to be a lot longer in terms of distance price traveled than this is here. And so cycle three may only subdivide as an impulse within it. Primary wave one looks very likely to be over here and primary wave two also very likely to be over here. It's an 83% correction of primary wave one. Again, that's absolutely within a very normal to be expected range for a second wave for a cryptocurrency. I'm noting here within primary wave one, intermediate three is 15.32 times the length of intermediate one. That's not a Fibonacci ratio. I'm just noting the length of how long three is in relation to one. Intermediate five was not the longest, strongest portion. Sometimes within a first wave, the fifth wave is shorter. It was 94.78 longer than 11.09 times the length of intermediate wave one. That is a Fibonacci ratio. So Ethereum, uh, a little bit unusual for cryptocurrencies, does sometimes exhibit Fibonacci ratios. They tend to be rather extreme, but it does exhibit them. That's helpful for target calculation in the future. This wave count is extremely bullish. It sees one, two at cycle degree, one, two at primary degree. It expects that in prices in the very, very early stages of a third wave at primary degree within a third wave at cycle degree. This is an extremely bullish wave count. If primary two were to continue any further, it may not move beyond the start of one below 82.05. 
let's take oh I expect it's extremely likely to be over there though because were it to continue further it would be longer lasting in duration than cycle wave 2 one degree higher but if it's over here it has a really normal proportion to cycle wave 2 this wave count has great proportion it has a really good look okay let's take a look at the weekly chart the high of primary wave 1 up here is this point up here primary wave 2 subdivides quite nicely as a double zigzag W the first zigzag and the double is labeled intermediate wave W X the double is joined by a 3 in the opposite direction and the second zigzag labeled intermediate wave Y over here deepens the correction beyond the end of W achieving its purpose and giving the double zigzag an obvious counter trend slope that's a really normal looking double zigzag where 2 is over, 3 should have begun, and I'm going to label within primary 3 intermediate wave 1 incomplete for Ethereum. I'm not going to label intermediate 1 and 2 over here, I think that's too brief. I think intermediate 1 may not be over, and it may be starting with a series of 1, 2 overlapping first and second waves. Absolutely normal behaviour, basing action over weeks and months, a slow start, acceleration through the middle, and explosion at the end of the third wave. So I have minor 1 an impulse, minor 2 a double zigzag, minor 3 may only subdivide as an impulse, within it minute 1 I'll have over here and minute 2 continuing as an expanded flat. Minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 1074.7. Let's take a look at the structure of minute 1 and 2 from this low here the end of minor 2 this point down here. Now I'm not going to label minute wave 1 over at this high because of this movement here. From this low to this high, if this was the end of minute 1 at this high here, then this upward movement must be seen as a 5 wave motive structure. It will not fit as an ending diagonal and it's extremely problematic to see it as an impulse. I cannot see where the middle of it, the third wave is. I don't want to label it 1, 2, three four five this does not subdivide as a third wave i don't want to label it one two three four five there's just not enough third and fourth waves in here to counteract the overlapping first and second waves that would have begun with i hope that explanation makes sense in short i cannot subdivide this as a five wave motive structure but it will fit beautifully as a zigzag so i am going to label my new wave one over here and minute wave 2 continuing as an expanded flat. Expanded flats are pretty common structures, but this one is a bit problematic. So I am acknowledging that, but this is the only wave count that has a great fit in terms of subdivisions. The problem is the length of minuet wave B in relation to minuet wave A. It's a 2.07 length of minuet A. There is no Elliott wave rule stating a limit or a maximum length for B waves within flat corrections, there is a convention or a guideline within Elliott Wave that says when your B wave is more than twice the length of wave A, the idea should be discarded based upon low probability. However, in my research, I have found some expanded flats where the B waves are longer than twice the length of the A wave. It's unusual, highly unusual, but it can happen, and I think it's happened in this instance because the subdivisions fit so perfectly. Minute wave 1 fits beautifully as a 5 wave impulse, minuet 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and minuet 3, the middle of it, 1, 2, 3, a beautiful impulse, 4, a running contracting triangle, and a short little fifth wave, minuet 4, a double zigzag, minuet 5, a short impulse, moves beyond the end of 3, and now we move into minute 2, an expanded flat. Expanded flats are labelled A, B, C, and they subdivide 3, 3, 5. This move down here subdivides as a double zigzag that's counted as a three wave structure, it's a corrective structure. A waves within flat corrections must subdivide as corrective structures, they can be any corrective structure except a triangle. Wave B subdivides beautifully as a zigzag, minuet A, minuet B, a running contracting triangle, fits beautifully within its trend lines, meets all Elliott Wave rules, and at its terminus does affect a net retracement of A. Minuets, oh sorry, sub minuet C 
not an absolutely perfect looking impulse but pretty good one two three four five the only bit that's not perfect is within wave three there's a third and fourth wave a little fourth wave in here which you can't see at this time frame its counterpart second wave is more long lasting that's actually quite common for cryptocurrencies and commodities to exhibit fourth waves that are more brief than their counterpart second waves and it gives their third wave that happens quite commonly in a third wave impulse and it gives the third wave impulse a three wave look at higher time frames I think that's what's happened here this wave count has support from classic technical analysis indicators which we will go to next there's a strong bearish candlestick pattern here and there's a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern right off the high if B is over here then C should be underway it must subdivide as a five wave motor structure it's most likely unfolding as an impulse and within it suddenly we one most likely over here two could be over here could move sideways or higher and then three four five to unfold so minuet c would be extremely likely if this is the correct wave count it's extremely likely to make a new low below this prior low back here to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat i've seen very few running flats in my 15 years of almost daily elliott wave analysis and the very few I have seen have a B wave that only moves a little bit beyond the start of A. Whereas expanded flats have B waves that move substantially beyond the start of A. So that tells me it's extremely likely if my analysis of this, if the subdivisions are correct, it's extremely likely for C to move below the end of A, at least a little bit. So my target for support is the logarithmic function of the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of my new wave 1. 1291.97 minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 1074.4 the nice thing about Elliott wave rules is all bar 1 they are absolute a new low by any amount at any time frame a fraction of a cent on a tick chart immediately fully invalidates this wave count tells me my analysis is wrong and something else must be happening but at this point I did have a bearish alternate it's been invalidated so at this point this is the only remaining wave count that I have for ethereum on the weekly chart we've got a new swing high above this major high back here giving us some confidence that we may have a sustainable low because now we have a series of higher highs we're getting for the short term a series of higher lows as well but we certainly have another major higher high that's some reasonable indication that this low back here may be sustained this downward movement ended with a selling climax absolutely normal behavior for the end of a bear market at this high here on the weekly chart we have a strong bearish engulfing candlestick pattern that supports the Elliott wave count that expects more downward movement initially look for support at 1750 below that 1295 and below that quite strong support at 1070 as price is moving higher overall volume is declining this supports the Elliott wave count there should be something off or wrong about B waves and overall declining volume fits that view on balance volume is within a narrow range no signal at the weekly time frame RSI is neutral money flow is neutral RSI reached oversold back down here it's only done that I think once before in the price history of ethereum and that was is associated with a low that has been sustained for the very long term to this date so this supports the Elliott wave count that sees this low also to be sustained for the long term ADX at the weekly time frame is increasing telling us there's a new upward trend in an early stage that doesn't eliminate the possibility of a pullback price will not move in a straight line there may be an upward trend in place but we could certainly see a pullback early on in this new trend uh, stochastics returning to neutral ATR declining as price falls that's normal for the end of bear markets continuing to decline overall as price mostly moves sideways now with a slight upward bias at the daily time frame I've already noted this bearish engulfing candlestick pattern almost right at the high here it had push from volume that's impressive so we can have some confidence in it you don't need to see push from volume for downward movement but when you do it is impressive look out for next support at 1750 at this time frame ADX is declining there's no clear trend the moving average situation is 
overall bullish. The short is above the mid, is above the long. The mid and long have positive slopes and prices above both. For the last two sessions, a little bit of bullishness and slightly bullish lower wicks, although this last session here is incomplete. Overall, as price is falling, overall volume is declining, but it's downward sessions which have strongest volume, stronger than upwards, so the short-term volume profile overall I would read as bearish. As price moved up to the high, there was some push from volume at the end, although overall volume was declining as price was moving higher. That's normal to see the end of an upward move end with strong volume and a bit of a vertical movement, quite normal. Overall, the decline in volume supports the idea that this could be a B wave. On balance, volume gives a rather weak bearish signal supporting the Elliott wave analysis. We've been over ADX, RSI and money flow both neutral, and stochastics oversold. ATR declined for the last portion of this upward movement that supports the Elliott wave count. We should see something weak about B waves and declining volatility during upward movement absolutely is a weakness there. And now price is falling, ATR is showing overall a little bit of an increase. So volatility to the downside supports the Elliott wave count. There's some reasonable support in these charts for that Elliott wave count. And that last upward move, just not subdividing as a five, but easily subdividing as a three, offers quite good support for the Elliott wave count. That's it for me with Ethereum for you. I hope everyone's having an awesome day.